Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. Now I saw some pretty significant snow last night and this morning across a lot of England and Wales and I've got the snow depth map from WeatherQuest up here. I'll put the link in description and if you've got any snowfall then please put the report in here because it really helps to understand the event. Um, but generally <clears throat> You can see that we saw quite a large region seeing snowfall all the way from some parts of northern England down into parts of Wales and as far south as southwest England and even in London. And actually I saw some snow this morning. I was kind of surprised. I didn't think it would be too uh, significant, but you can see here's a video I put on my Twitter. And it was actually fairly heavy too. The radar showed rain rates were around 20 to 30 millimeters an hour and then that translates to higher amounts of snow because uh, water obviously expands when it freezes but away from London which only saw about a centimeter in some places the Midlands and parts of Wales into northern England actually saw some decent covering early on in the night we saw a fair few centimeters through northern England um, and then that shift sorry that shifted further south into the Midlands Nottinghamshire uh, you can see here, so widely 5 to 10, even as much as 12, 13 centimetres. Uh, North Wales, too, in the border region saw some significant snow. Probably not many reports here due to the low population density, but I'm pretty sure a lot of snow fell there, too. And then down into parts of the West Midlands and areas further south as that snow band shifted uh, during the morning. So, like I said, please do report um, any snow you've got here to help fill this map, fill the gaps. But we did actually see significant snow, as expected, um, across lots of the UK last night, which was actually fairly significant for November. Now, the snow map doesn't show it because there are not that many people that live here, but the also other region of significant snow so far has been in the north uh, northern areas and eastern areas of Scotland or actually just really all of northern Scotland and that is because we are now fully under that northerly flow if we look at the European model here you can see this is the point we've got those very very dark colours almost minus 10 at 100, 850 uh, hectopascals which is around 1.5 kilometres above the ground so that cold air is now fully in place across all of the UK and Ireland so really any precipitation is from today onwards falling as snow and the temperature difference between the upper air and the ocean is driving the instability and now these showers are really fairly intense you can see the red dots indicating where we've likely got locally very heavy snow and as you can see it is falling largely as snow away from the immediate coasts so <clears throat> quite a significant accumulation has been building up here over the last few days and I imagine some of the high ground areas and people areas where not many people live are likely to see very significant accumulations in terms of this week we've got the cold air remaining in place until Saturday and so we've got the continued risk of snow across quite a large area during that time and I've made this graphic here to give an idea of the different snow risks through the week or specifically from Wednesday to Friday. The main one is obviously right now this the frontal snow is passed but the main one is of course the risk of showers across northern Scotland. Uh, models like the UKV which I have open here continue to suggest that by Saturday we could be widely looking at five centimeters plus uh, away from the immediate coasts, even as much as 20, and in some spots, as much as 30 to 50 centimetres of snow. So really quite uh, high amounts. And also remember that the models actually underestimate how far inland and also how intense these showers are. So really, I think most of Scotland, uh, most of Scotland is going to see falling snow at some point during this week. Um, Hence the white region actually probably should have said that first, but really anywhere is in white is at risk of seeing falling slow, snow this week. Um, I mean, to be honest, showers can just about infiltrate anywhere. So if you're maybe here and you see a snow shower, don't get angry that you weren't in the graphic. I'm sorry, uh, but it's probably not going to be significant. Uh, then in the blue regions, we're looking at accumulating snow being possible. So that's Northern Ireland and parts of Ireland, uh, Wales, a lot of Wales, actually Northwest England into the Midlands just about. Uh, and then also Northern, actually most of Scotland, not necessarily Northern Scotland, most of Scotland there. And then in blue, significant snow possible, five centimetres or more, possibly as much as, as you saw, 50 centimetres across high ground of Scotland. <clears throat> The other area to watch is this area of northwest England, possibly extending into parts of the Midlands as well, and also North Wales, and I'm going to talk about that shortly. Now, the areas highlighted in the dashed line are the areas of potential snow risks, but the uncertainty is very high. There's a potential risk on Thursday across, number one, Ireland, and then possibly areas further east as well. And then there's another snow risk, which I'm going to talk about in uh, more detail soon, uh, which is potentially down from parts of Scotland into central areas of England, and that's Friday, maybe Thursday. So in terms of the, let's kind of covered Scotland, which is the risk of showers will continue, 
and they're going to be quite intense. Um, and also, you can see, um, if you look at the map, you can see on the ice bars, you've got lots of kind of bends and areas where the ice bars pinch together a little bit, like that. That's an example of a disturbance, likely a small trough, an area of lower pressure. These are associated with rising motion, so they could provide uh, bands of longer spells of snow uh, in Scotland. But, of course, uh, that's not the only region that's going to see them, uh, and but that will probably increase the risk in areas further south. Across Northern Ireland and Ireland, same sort of thing. The temperature difference between the upper air and the ocean drives those showers. But we're not quite as strong here, but still, you're going to be getting that kind of ocean effect snow, and the models do show uh, lots of snow showers there through the week, um, as you can see, perhaps peaking on Thursday, the UKV suggests. But really, the thing about snow showers, you can't predict exactly when it's going to happen. You just know the broad risk of snow uh, is occurring through this region. And if you take a look at the accumulations, you can see um, do develop there uh, at some points during the week, especially across higher ground, but I think probably lower ground too. So that's island covered uh, and Northern Ireland. Then uh, we can talk about this region as well. Now, this is a fairly uncertain uh, one, but it is something worth talking about, and that's because a few models have started flagging the possibility of a snow event there. And that's in association with this low pressure system, which is kind of expected to develop across northern and northwestern France on Thursday. Now, the low itself is go expected to go much to the south of the UK, so not really a risk from that. However, we do have a cluster of convection which is forecast to move down uh, from this region and generally drift around just to the west of Ireland Wednesday into Thursday and you can see that there. And the thing about convection uh, which develops due to the instability in the northerly but if you get enough convection then you have enough latent heat release to develop or essentially lower the pressure, the atmospheric pressure, and develop its own low pressure centre. And once that happens, you can start to get your own vertical motion in the system and then your own precipitation, which would fall as snow. And this is supposed to develop, uh, well, some models say it will develop uh, across Southwest Island on Thursday. And it kind of gets an extra boost from this frontal system. Uh, you've got uh, rising air along the warm front uh, and that kind of joins on to extend the frontal band into parts of southwest Ireland and models such as the UKV um, give an absolute dumping of snow so you can see there uh, in this particular scenario which is you can't say any one scenario is going to verify but this is just saying if this would, were to occur you'd be looking at 30 to 40 centimeters of snow fairly widely so very very significant uh, and the models are starting to agree on it more you can see the GFS is starting to latch onto the idea the European model um, is now starting to latch onto the idea uh, and so is uh, the icon I actually haven't checked uh, the, you see the icon is a lot further south and that's the challenge because if this frontal band doesn't properly develop then that risk is probably a lot lower but I think the models are increasing in the number which do show that actually happening so I would say uh, the chances are probably getting better. We just can't quite focus, uh, we can't quite narrow down exactly the area and the degree to snowfall. But if you're on Southwest Island, I would keep a close eye on things. Uh, potentially, the risk could extend to areas further east as well. Uh, you can see if I run through the UKV loop here, this displays quite nicely what I was talking about earlier, which is you get this convection developing, uh, and then that there's enough latent heat release that you get its own low pressure system. Uh, which you would kind of see here and that kind of is a positive feedback because you get more rising air uh, more convergence and then that intensifies so you can see if i play through there it goes from nothing to something fairly quickly and possibly um, that could extend into areas of the southwest and maybe along the far south coast you can see in this particular scenario uh, that would be te temperatures close to zero degrees so probably falling as snow but i just think it's quite uncertain uh, and these kind of setups where convection is involved and you get a lot of kind of finicky processes which are kind of hard to model uh, along kind of frontal bands and there's stuff called kind of conditional symmetric instability which is not just normal instability but it's instability which re releases slant wise through the atmosphere that's often quite applicable in these kind of setups but is often hard to forecast so I mean I would watch the models and I will update you because this is forecast to be around Thursday uh, during the morning and into lunchtime as you can see on this model perhaps Wednesday night too so I will give an update and I'll provide a more graphic a detailed graphic but for now just keep an eye on things and like I said I'll update you on that later but that's an elevated risk of snow uh, in this general region here now the other one to look out for is um, the potential for a disturbance on Thursday. Now I've been keeping an eye on this for a while and that's because the models have been fairly insistent on bringing a shortwave down 
a shortwave trough down from the north through into central parts of the country. There it is on Thursday morning, uh, moves through parts of Scotland, and then by Friday at midnight, you can see there it is across parts of southwest England, that kind of bend in the isobars with our shortwave, and then you can kind of see the increased colours just being picked up there uh, and then into parts of extending kind of backwards into parts of northwest England there. Now the thing about these short waves is that yes they can provide vertical motion uh, and that can often lead to a kind of spell of snow you kind of similar process to what I was talking about before you initially get convection and then you can kind of develop that into its own low pressure system but if you look at the models this is the kind of confusing bit you can see they really have nothing at all they start to show a banding of precipitation across the north but that just doesn't really translate to an actual snow risk the only model of the kind of main models which had something was the gfs which you can kind of see develops a few specks of snow here but really in theory i probably would have expected a bit more especially since if we got the uh, wind funneling into this kind of Cheshire Gap region, you get frictional convergence, which is convergence which develops due to the difference in friction between the land and sea, changes the wind direction and you get convergence, which can actually enhance the uh, surface low and lead to more vertical motion. So that's something I probably would have expected more from. Now some of the models are starting to just about pick up on that. This is a uh, Swiss model, which I find fairly, fairly decent. And you can see this particular one does actually have more of a disturbance there. Uh, and then the convection is enhanced by the ocean temperatures uh, and you, sorry, the, the Irish, sea, the Irish uh, sea kind of temperatures. And you do actually get a bit of a disturbance pushing into parts of central and just about southern England on Friday during the night time. <clears throat> now, this does line up with some of the models. Uh, what the kind of upper air pattern suggests but like i said the models themselves aside from a couple are really not that promising so to be honest i don't quite know what to think i think i'm just going to wait a couple uh, a couple model cycles and see kind of what happens but that's why i've included this region uh, on the snowfall graphic for a potential risk However, these things can be notoriously hard to forecast, and the best example I can think of is November the 28th, 2022. And actually, we, this is the uh, system, I'm just going to try to find some images of it. Uh, here we go. This was a system that actually, we had a similar shortwave trough, you can see here, a very subtle one. This passed from Scotland down into parts of central, uh, uh, basically down the spine of the country. And this brought two to four centimetres of snow widely from Scotland down into this sort of region uh, right here. However, if you go on the models, and I remember this distinctly, for the same time, which was during the day on Sunday, you can see they actually show nothing whatsoever. Uh, that's four o'clock. By this point, I remember the snow was here, and you can see it's completely blank. So the models do have a history of not really developing these properly. And if you look at the observations back from that time, you can see evidence of that frictional convergence and then it helped to develop the low centre and it kind of gave a boost to the uh, precipitation. So that's something to look out for. Kind of uncertain, but I will, I've got my eye on it essentially because I think people may be dismissing the fact that yes, the models don't show anything, uh, but the upper air pattern does support that. So that's something I'm going to keep an eye on, of course, and I'll update you. Now the probably most significant uh, risk uh, a populated area will experience is the risk across northwest England, Wales, and the Midlands through tonight and then again Thursday and Friday. <clears throat> and that is the risk of a kind of Cheshire Gap streamer or repeated um, showers. Now, I've been keeping my eye on this as well for a while, and this is essentially, if you're not sure what we're talking about, we're talking about snow showers but becoming more organised showers. And that is because we've got a northwesterly flow. Um, starting kind of today, we've got a northwesterly flow and that intensifies Thursday into Friday. And the northwesterly flow is very good for snow events uh, in this sort of region here because you can see it funnels right along the Irish Sea. And the same process which causes showers to develop across the uh, ocean to the north of the UK causes these showers to develop in the Irish Sea because of that temperature difference. Another thing is the convergence caused by the land, the frictional convergence I talked about earlier. You can kind of see along the Cheshire Gap it funnels into uh, the northwest England and the Midlands and also slightly across parts of northwest uh, Wales. And you can see that very nicely there winds coming like that and the difference between the wind on the sea and the land basically causes a big convergence zone and you get uh, showers and even longer spells of snow developing in this region 
Now this is uh, shown by the models to actually start developing tonight. Uh, and initially, kind of across parts of uh, northern Wales, because you've got slightly more of a northerly component to that wind. So these showers developing more across North Wales. Uh, and actually, if we take a look on the UKV model, uh, you can see... Yeah, there we go. That's all going to be snow, obviously, because temperature is widely at zero. And that's going to be overnight, potentially snow across parts of North Wales, and then perhaps reaching into the Midlands. Um, so that's the first time that's going to happen. But then it happens again, uh, likely on Thursday into Friday. And the UKV doesn't go that far uh, on this run. But if I show you some other models, these are back to the high resolution Swiss models. They are actually showing uh, this threat develop fairly significantly. <clears throat> And I don't know if we can zoom into Northwest England here. Uh, we can just about. So if you play this through, this is a scenario that I think, based on everything we know, which is northwesterly wind, we know that's going to happen. We know there's going to be convergence in this zone because of the, the land that just doesn't change. That's going to be there. I do think the shower risk is really increasing from North Wales into Northwest England and parts of the Midlands. And in this scenario, <clears throat> we are potentially looking at fairly decent accumulations, uh, as can be seen here. In this particular scenario, a few centimetres fairly widely, uh, a lot across the high ground, potentially some areas even in land seeing five centimetres or more. So I really would be keeping a fairly close eye on this if you live in North Midlands, um, parts of North Wales and Northwest England. Uh, the immediate coasts may be moderated by the ocean, so Liverpool, uh, it's probably looking quite marg marginal for you, but Birmingham, Manchester, all these areas in between, I would definitely be keeping an eye on um, uh, on Thursday and into Friday as well. I just, let's just double check the timings because I re realised I didn't quite give a lot of detail there. Um, but yeah, this is, yeah, so Thursday night into Friday and that actually coincides with the uh, disturbance which I was talking about earlier. So you can see uh, Thursday night into Friday and especially on Friday morning, uh, there's that disturbance uh, at the upper levels. So although it's the back edge of that, that could really help develop the convection. So to be honest, I am expecting a fairly decent snow event to develop across this region here during Thursday into Friday. So that's kind of everything for now. Giving a quick recap, significant snow from showers across uh, Scotland from now until Friday, similar risk for Northern Ireland and a similar risk uh, for Wales and Northwest England. The main one will be tonight and into tomorrow across Wales and then again, uh, Thursday into Friday across this region of Wales, Northwest England and the Midlands. Uh, also potential for sh uh, snow showers along the east coast. The UKV showed that quite nicely this morning. Uh, let's go to this chart. Uh, UKV showed that quite nicely this morning. That could happen as soon as tomorrow morning. You can see two clusters of showers moving down the east coast there. Potentially a few centimetres in places. So that's something to look out for. And then, of course, the Thursday risk, um, late Wednesday into Thursday across Ireland, maybe areas of southwest England and Wales. And then Thursday into early Friday, we're looking at this disturbance across more central regions. So that's the snow risk covered. I'm going to quickly talk about the breakdown of this cold weather. Um, so you can see models now do all agree on the low pressure coming in from the southwest again on Saturday. We're likely to see a big snow event temporarily across the northern half of the country as that precipitation bumps into the cold air. So for a couple of hours on Saturday, we're probably going to see very heavy snow. It might even settle for a time, but it will be pretty much a pointless snow event because it's going to get washed away literally hours after by the mild southwesterlies. So potentially disruptive in terms of falling snow affects the transport conditions, etc, etc, but unlikely to be significant accumulations, I'm afraid. However, there is going to be the risk of heavy rainfall flooding because we've got a bit of an atmospheric river developing here. So especially across high ground of uh, uh, Western Ireland, uh, Western Scotland, Northwest England and Wales, flood risk there, and then potentially the risk of strong damaging winds, you can see as that low passes through. The current area at risk for winds at most seems to be central England, but of course we'll update you guys how things change and I'll end up doing a detailed video on this likely named storm come Saturday into Sunday. So a very busy week of weather ahead. Um, please ask any questions about snow or storms in the comments because I know I can't kind of give super detailed forecasts for everyone. But if you um, put in the comments, I'll try and respond. And if you have had any snow, please tell me in the comments as well. And in general, just have a good week. So bye. Thanks for watching.